Hey, so you are now watching at the bar with, we've got Jeff Reeder here from Duran Ventures. We've got, of course, the uh, infamous Mickey Fulp from Mercenary Geologist. I'm glad you said infamous <laughs> and not famous, because I would have had to correct that. <laughs> I'll take famous. And then, okay, and there then we've go. got I'll, um, Brett I'll let you have it. from Exploration Insights, and I'm Leslie Stokes from the Northern Miners. So we just basically wrapped up Vancouver um, Investment Resource Conference. Mm -hmm. We're kicking it back here at Preston's downtown mm -hmm. Vancouver, beautiful Vancouver. And my, this is my neighborhood bar, this Preston's. Is your okay. Bar. There are a lot. One of. No, it really <laughs> is the main one. Uh, you know, my place is about a block away. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. And so we've just been sitting here before we started uh, filming. We were discussing some of our, I guess, favorite mo memories of meeting mm -hmm. up with a bunch of geologists after a hard day's work at the bar and kind of what sort of memories kind of kicked out of that. So, okay. I don't know, Jeff, what were you Well, thinking? I've been, myself, I've been working most of my career in South America. And that's where I met Mickey back yeah. oh, 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah 20 years yeah, ago. And, yeah. uh, I mean, geologists, I mean, I, I remember your very first time that you guys done this. I was, I was really intrigued by it. And, and geologists, I mean, we, we work hard and we love to go to the bar and that's when we talk about the stories and talk about geology and, and stuff like this. But, uh, you know, I've worked in, in countries and one of my favorite uh, memories was I was working in Venezuela and we were in the jungles and, and there was a bar um, that was like two kilometers. We had to hike through the through the uh, jungles at night to go to this bar, and but it was, we, used to, we used to go every Wednesday night because it was the cold beer night. And it's the only time you got cold beer. Yeah, yeah. On the Wednesday, Otherwise, on the Wednesday you're night. drinking warm beer, right? Exactly, and so my boss was saying, he goes, you guys can't do this, but I said, boys will be boys, we always go to the bar, and so I said, my night, and my, my boss said, always a supervisor has to go, but I said, I go on the Wednesday nights because it was the cold beer. But we used to walk two kilometers during the jungle to get to the bar. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. So yeah. one of my favorite ones is Jeff and I, now we weren't in the field, most of our times we were in the field, but this was in downtown Toronto yeah. after a Cambridge House show, and we're sitting in the Intercontinental oh, yeah. uh, next to the convention center, and we're sitting with an office geologist, and one of these GIS guys, and he's telling us about his three or four adventures in the field, and Jeff's sitting there, and he just gets fed up, because we're really actual field geologists yeah. with decades right. of experience in the field. And Jeff just gets fed up with it, and he stands up, he slams his fist on the table, he chugs his beer, and he goes, you're not a field geologist until you've had malaria, <laughs> you've, you've been thrown in jail in a third world country, yeah. and you've oh, had a fist God. fight with a driller in another language. <laughs> Oh, and, yeah. and the entire Everything bar, was the quiet bar's, after that. The bar's <laughs> packed, and and with his kind of shrill Western Canadian voice, and he and he's yelling this, and the bar goes quiet. And I sit there and I thought, well, I got to come up with something on that. And these are both true stories. And I slam my fist on the bar. I chug my beer. I stood up and go, "You're not a field geologist until you've had cholera. Yeah. You traveled under a false name." for 10 days in a third world country, and you fled a third world country with a war felony warrant for your arrest. Yeah. And mine happened in Peru, and yours happened well, in my, my Venezuela. Hap Venezuela, and then also, you know, when I talk about a friend, uh, a foreign language, well, it was a French Canadian driller. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had a, we went, we had a, it was, that was when I, I was thought, a young I thought, geo. I but it's still, Spanish, yeah. so, yeah. no. anyway. Well, Brent? Uh, you know, that's a, a long list. I don't think I can top that. But I, I guess, it, does, a, does an Australian driller count as a foreign language? Well, maybe, I think so, yeah. <laughs> well, not, so not necessarily, a, a Queenslander does. Yeah, we okay. always have a North okay. Queenslander. Yeah, 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 it has to be a Queensland. yeah. Queenslander. Yeah, we worked up there, uh, you know, up there a long time ago. When I first went to the bar, the first bar we'd been to, Kim and I, my wife had been, Kim and I would uh, been on the road for like nine months, all not on the road, traveling through mm -hmm. the South Pacific, landed in, us in Sydney, flat broke, it was a boom. Two days later, we, we were hired, we sent up to North Queensland, went out to Forsyth, which is nowhere, and we're at the bar, and yeah, they got the cigarette like that, hang out like this, mm -hmm. the hat like that. There you go, mate. Uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. We could not understand a freaking word. Oh, yeah, soon. Right. And it took uh, probably three days before we were just 
sufficiently drunk to understand what they were saying, and after that, it worked out real well. <laughs> the slurring just turned into yeah, words. Yeah. I, I can speak Australian. Yeah. <laughs> Australian. Australian. Well, it's uh, yep. my contribution. I definitely have to say to add to your list. I just thought of this: is that you're really not a field geologist, maybe working in like you know a developing country or just kind of out there until you've actually run your hash house carrier for the first time, and you've been christened the name, which is like this expat tradition that field crews have when they're working mm -hmm. overseas in different countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was part of the Bathroom Pijau Hash House Terrier, which celebrated their thousandth run before they were taken over um, in Sambawa, like new months old. Month. Right, right. And so, uh, yeah, definitely on the list of, yeah. of things So, So I got one for you. Crews. How many people have been screeched in? Oh. In Newfoundland, really? you've been oh, screeched yeah. no, in. No, no. You, oh, yeah. you, what is that? You, you kiss really? a codfish. Oh no, I haven't. You kiss a codfish no. on the lips. And the other thing is, hey. how, how many have have uh, have drunken the pet mummified toe in the Yukon with Yukon Jack? Oh. You know, I've done both of those. I, I, and and you, but you don't swallow the toe. And and you know, I eat anything. I'm kind of like that bizarre foods yeah. guy, uh, Andrew Zimmern. Yep. You know, and you kind of got to eat anything if you're in the field. And I was really going to swallow the toe until they told me if I swallowed the toe, twenty-five hundred dollar fine. Oh, you pay for it? No, uh, yeah. And some guy swallowed the toe in, in Dawson this summer. And did he pay yeah. the fine? And refused to pay the fine. Oh, really? So I think he'll never be allowed to set foot in Dawson City again. Oh my God. Uh, so speaking of the yeah. Yukon too, just to like jump into what it is we've been hearing about lately in the past couple of days. As I know, I was speaking or I was uh, listening into Gold Corp's president and CEO, mm -hmm. David Garrett Follows, mm -hmm. Follows, and he was talking about how um, at Gold Corp and Kamenak and their new strategy is by no longer um, looking at growth portfolio wise, but quality, gro growth and quality rather than quantity. Well, that's a novel idea. <laughs> right? Yeah, and we've been so, harping on that for how long now, Brent? Well, isn't that interesting? Because, yeah, that, that's a different yeah, story. Well. So what do you guys think about in terms of district potentials um, that they might be looking at and that you guys are looking at someplace where you can you have a company that has really large um, tenement package in a really interesting district that has a lot of potential. Is there anything that like kind of comes to your mind? Well, Nan, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what geologists do at the bar. Oh. And so draw the uh, map. Here, here's my here's eyes. here's <laughs> we, we draw maps on cross yeah. on, on bar napkins. And right? district and, yeah. and we and we draw cross sections. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna drill I'm gonna drill I'm gonna draw <laughs> My latest district play, okay? Oh, is it? Yeah. Can I can I guess as we're as you're doing it? It's that? zinc. Do you want my pretty gold pen to draw your zinc play? Is that working? So here's the Republic of Ireland. Okay. And oh. a company I'm involved with now controls 40 kilometers of a zinc play. It looks like in Ireland. South, uh, South Central Ireland. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hannah. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Founding That's shareholder okay. Hannah. You know, I, I like to, I've looked at that. It's really interesting. It's deep. But you've got to drill that thing off on 25 meter centers and it's 400 meters deep. So that, that's kind of a bitch. Yeah. And how but, is but it's a basin. Yeah. And okay. that's the deepest part of the basin. Mm -hmm. And there's something 20 to 30 known occurrences in overlying rocks that were mined mm -hmm. in the 1800s that have never been drill tested right. at shallower depths. Let me see if I can draw a picture of the district, you. my district uh, that, I, that I've uh, got put money into recently. Okay. This is easy. <laughs> it should be. Um, He's drawing and where is that? A joint venture. Yep. It's a joint it's venture up here and down there. They've got six million ounces here. They just sold that to Goldfields. They own about 200 kilometer trend of Greenstone Belt in West Australia. That nice. looks pretty good. Nice. And they just they just announced they're spending 20 million bucks this year, looking on their 100 percent drive. That's and, and Gold Road resource. Gold, Gold Road, yeah, but it's oh, Australian yeah. listed. Right. I was just yep. out there. Um, so. Oof. Yeah. Last month. Are they TSX listed or yeah, on just, the Australian just side? Just ASX. But that's an entire district. That's what we want, you know, right? So Jeff? Is Australia yeah. a bit of a region that you guys have started to like look at in terms of 
Australian. I love Australian food. Well, well, even though you can't speak the language. Well, hang on, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Myself, well, what I believe... You can't speak Queenslander. Yeah. No one can. Yeah. They wasn't born somewhere between Brisbane and Townsend, right? <laughs> well, I spent enough time in Queensland. I, I can actually get by. They made me an official uh, Australian up there. Mm -hmm. I was right. there so long. It was good. So, Jeff, what about you? Uh, in, about you, you know, in South America, I've, I've worked as Mickey and Brent knows. I've been working in South America for most of my career. And I look at, I'm on the Peruvian geology, which you know quite a yeah, bit about. Right, yeah, right. It's this, it's this belt of rocks that comes through. The golden through. triangle. Well, it's, it, but it's a tertiary rocks, and it goes from all the way throughout the Peru. And those were, were all the epithermal, um, all the way through. And the Anacocha was way up here, which was yep. a 50 million ounce ore body. And it's going to be coming to the end. But, you know, there's there's new little deposits are being found all the way through this belt. And... Even some of them at a half a million ounces will make it because they're yeah. they're they're just very you get, good metallurgy. You get Guido Castillo to mine it, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and every time when some junior finds a a small little ore body with three or four hundred thousand ounces, everyone says Guido's got another mine. Yeah, exactly. So, and and um, you know, and this is this is where I've been focusing most of my well. Career. So okay. so Alto Chicama is what, well eight million ounces, and and, and, and it, it's almost all. And it was a blind. It was a blind it's discovery. A blind discovery. And they hit it on hole one sixty nine. Yep. Yep. You and, know. And there's uh, mm -hmm. uh, Purina, which Purina. mined nine million ounces yeah. of gold. That was, and that's a beautiful story too, yeah. because it was sitting there, and 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 the geologist has to get out in the field and bang rocks. And I always say, even if you, you know, when I tell my geologist, I always tell them, I say, go in the field and take samples everywhere, because at least we know you've been there. Because sometimes you yeah. don't. Like, how come this part of the map is blank? And then I find out that oh, yeah, we walked there, we didn't see anything. No, sample it. Sample right. it because you, you, you get a one or two hundred ppm anomaly. Gold, gold in, is in where that. you find it in some of the yeah. some of the deadest looking rocks. We used mm -hmm. to say, and I'm go, probably going to rile some people up, is that that rock is either as hard as God's head or as dead as Jesus. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> never heard that. I like we that. might want to cut might, that. I might use that. Yeah, 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 but. <laughs> But that, I, but but the, it goes to show you. I mean, here's an example. Go to the San Francisco mine, Timmins mm -hmm. Gold Mine, mm -hmm. which is soon to shut down, I think. Mm -hmm. And look at that rock and tell me if it's something you would sample if you mm -hmm. walked across. I don't think you would, but it's an ore body. It was mined. Mm -hmm. So you need your points well taken. Is if it, you're a geologist and you're mm -hmm. working every day, you ought to carry a load of rocks off, well, you, off, off the mountain on your back every day. Yeah, and, and I always tell my guys, there's no excuse for not coming back with rock samples. So this is my next question to you guys mm -hmm. then. Um, with these districts that you have so beautifully drawn, yeah. this looks like a banana, a okay. banana bandit. I think my map's the best one of them. So, um, mine look, mine about, look, looks like a potato. What does because yours look it, like? It's a potato, it's Ireland, okay? <laughs> okay. A potato with glasses, with, smoking it's, a cigarette, it, it's a, and, uh, and uh, up, north is up. This, I don't, okay. This is okay. Like north is always up. <laughs> exactly. I, I, hey, we neglected to put scales. Uh, yeah. We have to put scales and yeah. north arrows on our map. Okay. Yeah. Well, what kind know, of field geologists the, where are we? Come so on, put a scale on your map. So my question for you guys is, if you can go through and say. With these districts that you've chosen, the mm -hmm. companies that are working in there, mm -hmm. what is it about the company that you like as their geologist? Like, what is the quality of the work that they're doing, and why are you interested in that particular district and that particular company? You know right. what I, I think is that... This is Gold Road Resources, right? Gold Road, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we all agree with this, is you've got experienced guys with innovative ideas going to new areas. It means bald guys or guys with gray beards. That's right. <laughs> you know, I can. And me. <laughs> right over. Going, going to new areas <laughs> yeah. uh, with new concepts, mostly covered ground, and doing the detailed work it takes to come up with the, an idea of where you're going to find something that no one's looked. Because you can always add a little bit around the mine, you know, the mining companies can do that. But bottom line, we need new districts and new discoveries. The only way you're going to do that is with new ideas into new areas. It's going to be hard. Agreed. And, Agreed. And, and so these guys have turned something completely different, because this is in the Yilgarn, is it? Like down the kind of Western Australia, but in the southwest. It's the furthest 
furthest east greenstone belt mapped in Australia. Right. So, so it hasn't it, been looked at very much. It's, it's never been looked at. It's mostly covered with sand. Right. So they were able to like probe deep, discover that greenstone belt, and come up with these. There's numbers. outcrops. There's been some work in the. Uh, mm -hmm. Australian government had done some work and mapped it. So there was information. Yeah. But they put it together, went out yeah. there and found six million ounces. That's amazing. And yeah. um, Mickey, what about... what? So Hannon so Meadows is, is run by a group of Aussies. Mm -hmm. Now, they're not Queenslanders, oh. but, uh, but there are a bunch of Aussies that I have been involved with with three other startup companies, all of which meant, went to multi-dollar valuations, and this is their next venture. And good team of geologists, they know how to structure the deal, they know how to manage the share structure, and I have a track record with these guys. Mm -hmm. so. And you've, you've met these geologists in person? Oh, I first, met, I first met them in Peru in 1997, mm -hmm. and they've been working in Scandinavia and Europe for the last 10 years, and it evolved into Scandinavia and European plays. Right. Jeff, what about, where's your, where's your Well, mainly here? Peru and, and South America I've been working on. And what I always do is you must take a look at, like, I believe that um, the new ore bodies are going to be found by good conceptual thought, thinking. It's, it's not going to, your ore bodies are not outcropping anymore. Those things are gone. I mean, they're mine. And I always look for, if we're looking at a porphyry system, look at the porphyry system is always the recessive area. Look at, you, you look at the surrounding rocks. And some of the discoveries that ever happened is always undercover. But you got to look on the edges and you got to take all your vectoring to an area and to go into those recessive areas and take a risk. Um, there was a massive discovery in where I was, I had to part the northern part of uh, the discovery through my company, Duran. Um, Pinoles, Mexico, actually, they drilled a 300 ppm copper anomaly with a geophysical target and hit a 500 million ton ore body. Yep. 300 ppm copper. Nobody would actually, you would not be able to raise any money on that and some of it, and you have to think conceptually now. You have to use geochemistry and geophysics and you have to understand that. Multi, multidisciplinary yep. approaches to everything because we've trod on most of the ground in the world. The, the world became an oyster in the early 90s and countries that we had never explored before, we were all over the world, yep. funded by by Vancouver and Toronto based companies and we have now walked most of those areas and it becomes more harder and harder. You gotta combine geology, yeah. geochemistry, geophysics and I wanna say something about the art of geology okay. versus the science. So as as geologists mm -hmm. we think in three dimensions. Most people see the world in two dimensions. We automatically think of the world in three dimensions mm -hmm. and that's well, the four, science time. of geology mm -hmm. and like the fourth is things. time and that's the art of geology yeah. when you add, I add the time factor in. Right. It's not only geologic time but it's the timing of when you yeah. do the deal and timing of raising money and there's a lot more to make in a mind than geology. So I think that maybe kind of the overarching like theme to this is that, you know, we are in a time period where a lot of the major deposits are being found. Um, we just can't play the same game anymore in terms of like spitting out elevator pitches and being able to like doesn't work anymore. woo people. Yeah. It doesn't work anymore. So what you guys are saying is you need to find a project that has a very credible team or project that's backed by strong geologists very dynamic sort of um, kind of still at least I guess taking risks and I don't know what what do you guys feel is well like you have to have people who are familiar with how to raise money in the capital markets efficiently without diluting their so share structures yeah. to oblivion and and yeah. so uh, and a good geologist will, will ha have all those capabilities a good economic geologist mm -hmm. will be able to span that he takes the project to a point where he turns it over to the engineer Okay, so we got to cut this short, apparently. Yes. Okay. But, but we're going to have a bonus section at the end, like uh, the Baby Show used to have, where you could look at other videos, because I think this is a, we're starting to get into some good stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so what you need to do is find, you know, you need conceptual ideas, you're drilling 500 or 300 PPM or PPB copper anomalies. PPM, oh, PPM copper anomalies. PPM copper, PPM copper. Yeah. PPB gold anomalies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, 
That's what we need to do. Yeah. But you go to any of these brokers here in Canada, and they're going to go, yeah, I'm not going to give you money for that. Yeah. Show me something where you can replicate a drill. Yeah. And that's the real problem. Okay, so I always do a toast at end of these, and usually they're in Spanish, mm -hmm. so I know Jeff's going to understand. But this is uh, a Mexican toast. Yeah, Brent too, and it's the way things work in Mexico yeah. and the way Mexicans think. Okay, okay, and I love Arriba. Mexico. Yeah, it's a tomar, a tomar, porque el mundo se va a acabar. Okay, que bien. And and that means let's drink because the world's going to end. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, and, then, and and also another one in Mexico is arriba. Abajo, abajo, a centro por dentro. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.